first going to read a quote by Nelson Mandela that came to me as the first speaker was speaking. I don't remember your name, but you were incredible. Thank you so much. And this quote came to my mind when you were speaking. No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. Love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. So, um... <laughs> Thank you. Um, I chose to wear pink because my mother was a colorful woman, and she was a rainbow, and she would have loved it. This is her dress. So, before I begin, in honor of my extraordinary dear mother, my best friend, my greatest advocate, my dancing partner, my pumpkin, I would like to hold a moment for us to say a peaceful and silent prayer for a few different causes, because my mother would approve of this. There was never just one thing she was inspired by or passionate towards. Um, so after I read all of the causes, we can collectively hold space and pray together um, in whichever way works for you. So. I would like to hold a moment of peaceful, peaceful prayer and gratitude for the warriors who were members of the synagogue um, and who were part of the hospital team at Palomar. Um, sir, I see, I saw this, oh. Um, who did everything in their human power to help my mother and to surround her with compassion, kindness, and love. Her guiders that comforted her body and made space for the tremendous light that took my mother's spirit, her soul, way up high above it all to be greeted by her dearest friends and of course flowers of all kinds. I would like to hold a moment of peaceful prayer in awe for the young children who were present during the tremendous tragedy of the event and who experienced trauma in the many forms it manifested. I want these children to know that you are warriors you are resilient, you are powerful survivors, and I am profoundly moved by your bravery, by the love you have within that will never leave you, but will only grow and grow and grow. Um, I, would, I would like to hold a moment of peaceful prayer for the victims of gun violence, religious violence, racism, and anti-Semitism all over the world. And I want to pay specific mention to two recent events, the tragedy in New Zealand and in Sri Lanka, we are all a part of the human species, and this alone will forever unite us in love and in solidarity. And lastly, I would like to hold a moment of peaceful prayer and celebration for all of the Jewish people on every part of our planet. Okay. So in recent years, I had a conversation with a dear, dear teacher of mine who told me of her perspectives on birthdays, how if anything on one's birthday, one should celebrate their mother as if they were the ones who brought our life into world, into being and into breath. For the past two birthdays I have, I have had in my early 20s, I decided upon the ritual of writing my mother a love letter in honor and in gratitude for all she had given me throughout life, but also, also specifically within the past year. On my 22nd birthday this past January, I constructed a letter in pink to my mother and wrote the following passage that occurred as my mother, father, and I sat around the Shabbat table over dinner. On my birthday tonight, you read from the big and tangled, old and thick with ink scrapbook that documented the moments before my life was to begin in the several years after I came from your womb. You read me the words you wrote when we met for the first time after you gave birth to me. I was in shock how beautiful you were. I could not believe you were mine. As you read those words to me, the three of us sitting around the Shabbat table, I felt the power of your utmost raw, genuine, full of a mother's love kind of words, and it touched all depths of my soul. I thought to myself, in times where I feel angry or frustrated with my mother in the future, instead of allowing this heated energy to take me on a trip of rampage and urge my tongue to speak passionate words of unkindness, let I remember what it felt like to hear my mother speak her most real and uncensored thoughts that she wrote down in the first scrapbook of my life about what it was like to lay eyes on me, her daughter, for the first time. May I allow myself to take a deep breath with these words and let them calm me and bring me back to centering myself and acting with awareness towards my frustrations. Let my mother's first words about me bring a reminder of her love and that behind every action or intention, whether it has frustrated or pleased me, has and will always be her love for me. It is no secret to many of you, my mother and I have been on a wild journey, and there was a time in our past where we were estranged, 
and I never thought I could or want to see her again. I was so angry, I was blinded by the complexity of the situation, I was hurt, and I unfortunately had no positive or sane direction. I would never have imagined my 15 and 16 year old selves two things. One, that my mother was giving me my first lesson in radical empathy for the experiences we were to go through as individuals and as a collective family unit. And two, that we, my dear mother and I, would have to go through the thickest of fire to find ourselves outside of the heat and into each other's arms, a symbol of the rebirth of our relationship, where we, where we became each other's closest confidence, where we marveled at the joy of one another, where we found incredible acceptance for our differences and where we celebrated as much as we could with music and dancing, whether it was in the kitchen, outside, or singing in the car. I know my mother felt a lot of shame for the complex experience we had to go through to get to where we were together. Many people spoke bad on her name and she felt a profound sense of character assassination as she would say it. And this humiliation haunted her until her last moment when she decided she needed to prove to herself that she was a hero, even though so many of her friends and family, myself included, had expressed to her how unbelievable she was in terms of resilience and profound strength. My dear mom, I am speaking to you now in front of all of these people. I am telling you that our story was, is, and will forever continue to be nothing short of extraordinary and remarkable. We are magic together. We achieve the impossible dream. I wanted a mother who I could tell anything to, who could listen to me without judgment, who would advocate for the things I needed to support myself. I wanted a mother who could see me for how I wanted to be seen, who could love me as I wished to be loved, who could hug me as I craved to be held. I wanted a mother who could teach me about life, who would be honest and transparent with me about her experiences. I wanted a mother who I could trust, who I could dance with and speak freely to. I wanted a mother who, could tell, who I could tell everything. I wanted a mother who would tell me everything about her life. I wanted a mother who could support my freedom, who wished me freedom, who could help me achieve freedom. And my dear mom, my sweet Lori Lynn, we achieved this. You gave me all of this, and it could not have been achieved any other way than what we had to go through to get there. We walked through our own desert, and we basked in the glory of our healing and in our forever connection with our roots as mother and daughter, intertwined in bond. We celebrated, we celebrated every day with our matching tambourines, with our loud, cackling voices, with angels in the forms of remarkable women who guided us through the hot sand the lack of water, back onto the brilliant roads of our home together where we took so many walks, holding hands, marveling at the brilliance of us. We healed together under trees, in booths at diners, in car rides, while hugging one another tightly and swaying back and forth to a rhythm just our own. My mother gave me every opportunity I could have dreamed of. All of who I am today is a result from the experiences we had together. She would always say the same thing about a life-changing experience she had at the age of 18, when for a year she traveled with a group known as Up With People. <laughs> Their most recent mission statement includes the following words. In a world filled with constant change, we are often divided by fear and intolerance. Up With People is breaking down these fears by using our unique blend of music and social action to empower people across the globe to think differently about their world and understand the things that unite us as a people and societies, our common humanity. In the past few years, my mother would generously share with me intimate stories, pictures, and letters from her year on the road with this organization. It was an experience that led her on the course of journey up until her last moment. Joining up with people shaped her identity. It was a core element of time in which she found herself, a time where she was in direct alignment with her purpose on this planet. And in her own majestic ways, she was able to impart to me not only the wisdom of all she learned through up with people, but because of all that we went through, I had a very similar experience to her, where I found unity amongst people I never could have imagined I would meet, let alone be in solidarity as a sisterhood with, in celebration of our common humanity. This was a second gift my mother gave me in terms of having radical empathy. My mother was an ecstatic Jew from birth. The melodies and songs she learned in Hebrew school as a child stayed with her throughout her life. The way my mother most celebrated her Judaism was through her dedication to rituals and her dedication towards giving me a Jewish life and education. Sukkot and Passover were her favorite holidays. And for those of you who had the opportunity to visit our home over the years, you know that my mom kept a sukkah up for the whole year. 
because she loved the lights and she loved the palm leaves and she loved the art. It was her most sacred space. My mother was devoted to the ritual of Shabbat for most of her time on this planet. People were over at her house every Friday or she was at a friend's house celebrating, celebrating, celebrating. She put all her love and light into making the sacred bread of, bread of challah every week. And most of the time, it wasn't even for our own family, but for, but, but for her to give to others, dropping them off at houses, on top of cars, <laughs> inside mailboxes, or even bringing them to her office. As a child, I learned the blessings by heart. And for the past six years, it was always my mother's greatest joy when I would recite to her by memory the Aishas Chayal me, Yimsa, who can find a woman like her. She would look at me smiling. She would close her eyes in complete happiness, how she loved to see me sing in honor of her warriorhood, her ability to be a creator to life and to love. My mother and father decided they wanted to raise me in a Jewish household that celebrated all the holidays, and they gave me a Jewish education from preschool to eighth grade. But after I graduated from middle school, my Jewish education continued in the form of being exposed to real life, to experiences I never could have imagined I would have, to meeting people I never thought I would be calling sisters. And my mother's hand was in all of this. She knew Judaism went beyond the text, beyond the guidelines, beyond the synagogue. She knew Judaism was also about who you are as a person, how you treated others, how you respected and showed loving kindness to all people. My mother lived her life this way. Everyone was her sister. Everyone was her trusted confidant. Everyone was her friend. And I am profoundly grateful that she believed in my ability to understand and recognize this truth of how it is a duty for a Jewish person to celebrate and stand in sacred awe for all of her gifts and histories of origin. I wrote my first poem about bubbles at the kitchen table with my mother while I was in fifth grade. My mother took me to my first music festival together, Gathering of the Vibes in Bridgeport, Connecticut. My mother told me the stories of her life at Cantor's Deli on Fairfax and in all corners of her home. My mother drove me to LA every Thursday in the year of 2015 for me to have the chance to work on understanding myself and to work on healing our relationship because she believed in our freedom and she believed in my own freedom. She gave me my freedom and we healed and we healed and we healed. On our last drive together this past Friday, I asked her if she was proud of me. I would always be asking her this, and always she would say, yes, Hanny, yes, I'm so proud of you. I told her she was my best friend. She was wearing pink, and I was wearing black, her two favorite colors. And she wanted me to play three specific songs for her as we drove into the night. Elvis Presley's If I Can Dream, Lana Del Rey's Summer Wine and Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, but I played her the Jeff Buckley version. She hadn't heard it before, and she fell in love with his voice. <laughs> My mother's most pure manifestation of her love, of her presence as a phenomenal woman, of being a loving, hum a loving human being, was shown in many ways, but I'm going to highlight the several most important components I believe represents my mother in her totality. Friendship. My mother thrived and lived her entire life for the sake of friendship, to give flowers to people all over San Diego and from the world, to bask in the glory of connection, of story, of history. My mother's friends are a rainbow. She was a rainbow. Her relationships were one of the things that made her most proud. My mother raised me to become like her, a woman who embraced all people, to give to all people, to love all people. And in my past, I will humbly admit I resented her for this. I wanted my mother all to myself. I didn't want her to have the expectation for me to be kind and open to all people at all times. I didn't want my mother to be the peacekeeper, the neutral person in the middle for all of my friendships with her emphasizing the magic C word, communication. But by the grace of light and profound blessings through the work my mother and I did together in our healing, I can say with complete assurance that I understand where she is coming from and what she was trying to teach me in simple terms, the importance of kindness, the sacredness of connecting with others, and forever, this will be a key element steering me onward on the journey of my own life. An inspiration. My mother was inspired by many, many, many people, whether it was their story or the words they put to paper. She knew I loved words and would always take the time to find the sections in the newspaper where a writer or a poet was being highlighted to give to me. Her entire life, she collected quotes, books, sayings, and would love to speak them to me and to all of her friends and community. She was heavily into news, 
and all kinds of stories caught her attention. She admired newscasters, one woman in particular, Nancy Grace, <laughs> who has devoted her life to accomplishing justice for victims of horrific crime. My mother would tell me of a dream in her earlier youth she had of wanting to be a newscaster, and she wanted to be on television, and she wanted to handle the stories of the world and provide coverage for everyone. Not only did my mother have this role in her own circles of family and friends, but her heroism has been covered by all of her favorite news channels. <laughs> it has been seen and recognized all over the world. And for this, my mother's childhood dream has come true of wanting to share a story with the world, in this case, her heroism with the world, not for her own benefit, but to reach others' hearts and spirits for the sake of inspiration, for the profound ability to touch people's spirits, as so many stories she collected and shared with me and with others touched her. My mother's dream was to be a bridge of love, reaching one person to another. She wanted to be the bridge itself. Steady foundations planted beneath dirt, water, ground, holding up a place of meeting for people to cross and to connect and to love. She was a part of the foundation of our synagogue, not just spiritually and metaphorically, but literally. She was part of the building process in constructing the synagogue. And I know this was always one of her biggest honors. She celebrated life cycles in this holy place of prayer. She raised me in this holy place of prayer. My childhood friends and I know the whole premises by heart. Um, she shook her tambourine in this loving space of Jewish livelihood with all of her might. And I have full belief that when my mother's spirit and soul, her precious neshama, rose from her giving and precious physical form, there were tambourines shaken in honor and in celebration by every woman in Jewish history. My mother has become one of them. She is all of our heroes, and I relinquish my childhood stubbornness that wanted her all to myself. I know, I know this would make her ecstatic for her to hear, and I know she has heard me. My mother gave me a third lesson in radical empathy. The young man who shot my mother, a 19-year-old who apparently was a nursing student, studying the human form to be of service to others in healthcare, took my mother's life with passionate anger. There were many forms of hatred that brought this man to do what he did. But his hatred does not shadow the love of my mother and the love of the community she was a part of, the love of the synagogue that was built by eager and precious hands ready to serve and celebrate one another in the spirit and sacredness of Judaism. I know my mother has already forgiven this man who shot her, not only because she had a profound and motherly capability to forgive me and our history together, but because her mission, how she lived her life, and her decision to preserve the life of the leader of the community, the children, all of us, automatically banishes the hatred that tried to take her light. Her light has reached all crevices of our planet. She has become the mother of my dreams. She completed an act of service for the whole Jewish people. And as I conclude this ode to the love I have for my mother, I return to the love letter I wrote to her on my, second, on my 22nd birthday where I signed off the pages with a, with a bullet point list of intentions I plan to implement for my mother and I for the year and beyond. I wrote, I want to be an advocate for all of your stages of growth as you fly onward and forward into your 60th decade. I want to continue to have honest conversations surrounding our bodies. I hope to never ruin another one of your birthdays again with my anxious indecision towards something you want to do that clashes with my comfort. I want to continue our wonderful dialogue of transparency and sharing our experiences and feelings and working through our roadblocks, leading us to the rainbow you always had your eyes on. I want to practice being open towards listening on a more deeper level to your opinions and feelings in our moments of disagreement, to not just be open to this kind of listening when it is good for me, as you would like to say. And please continue to say it because I need a reminding. I want to never cease dancing with you to your favorite 60s and 70s hits. I want to practice allowing you to show your love for me in the ways that you most like to show it and not allow my discomfort or fear get in the way or prevent you from doing so. I want to go on walks with you from one end of the world to the next and do so holding hands. And finally, I want to practice walking in gratitude for all you have done and continue to do in your unwavering support of me. Thank you.